Okay, Tom, I have a challenge for you today, okay? Um, I, it's a coding challenge, right? All right. So I know that you have limited programming experience mm -hmm. yep. and extensive ma mathematical knowledge. Yes. Um, so we're gonna okay. try. We're gonna try and like sort of bring one up, almost to meet the level of the other. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the thing I want you to code is um, is basically this interesting paper from the fifties where these guys found um, an interesting way of iterating uh, to find the sum of three cubes that is less than one hundred. A cubed plus B cubed plus C cubed is equal to an integer that is between zero and one hundred. Yeah, and we want to find an answer for one, two, three, four, all the way up to 100. So one to 100, okay. we, want, we want a sum of three cubes that equals all of those integers. Okay, yep. can we do it for all of them though? Because my initial thought as a mathematician is, can you even find it for yeah. some of them? So uh, you, have to quote, you have to check on this. I think some of them are proven to be impossible. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, so it's so. not a case that I need yeah. to get all 100. It's let's okay. get as many as we can. Yeah. It's, okay, that's let's the get challenge. as many as okay. we can. So okay. the challenge specifically is to beat the original paper. Okay. okay? So <laughs> yes. these guys used like a computer the size of this room and they had to write really low level code, like mm -hmm. manipulating individual bits of RAM. Yeah. We don't need to do any of that. We've got like a 2019 MacBook Pro <laughs> and Python. So yes. we can just throw all everything at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is quite interesting because People have thrown supercomputers at this for some of the ones that haven't been found yet. Mm -hmm. um, and like the last one was found like in the last 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. the numbers are astronomically massive. Yes. That's not gonna happen today. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think the numbers are so big that like literally Python wouldn't allow you to type that in without some like okay. crazy manipulation. Yep. So you're not, gonna, you're not gonna get all of them. <laughs> so the challenge is to beat them in like, let's say 10 minutes. 10 minutes okay, so of I, program runtime. Okay, I was going to say, because if I'm going to learn this in 10 minutes... No, no. <laughs> 10 minutes if, you can do that, if you can write the code in four hours, I'll be impressed. <laughs> okay. So, I, I sent you the paper last night. Yeah. And uh, luckily, you're a mathematician, so you understood the concept of the paper pretty I, well. I think so. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, it's quite simple, like, in, in like, mathematics terms. Um, and, it, and, and it's quite a good starting point for someone who's, like never written any Python code before mm -hmm. in their life. Yeah, um, that would be me. Yeah. This is the first step <laughs> yeah. on the journey um, to bringing my Python knowledge level <laughs> yeah, with my yeah, 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 just, okay. just, yeah, right. just bringing it up a notch. <laughs> so I'm going to be here. I'm going to hold your hand through the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. So I'm going to get on with some work and you can ask me like uh, some basic syntax questions and um, like basic like structuring of the code. Yeah. As for like the actual like concept of the code, that's all up to you. Okay. Luckily, you're quite a clever guy, so we should be all right. Hopefully. <laughs> it's being put to the test, isn't it, right? Now so, I know how you feel in all of your videos. Yeah, horrible. It's payback. So here is one uh, beautifully um, decorated MacBook Pro. Thank you very much. Uh, you've got the paper. Yeah, I've got some notes on, yeah. on what I think is happening yeah. with the maths. And we're going to actually, here's some technical details. We're going to code this in processing using Python. So that is just purely for a visualization thing so that you guys can see it. Um, but the basics of this will be written in Python. All right, best of luck. Thanks. <laughs> I've opened processing. That's good, yeah. yeah. And I'm and in there's, Python. I, and there's already like legions of people that are furious that you're using processing. No doubt. <laughs> I'm using, Mike recommended this program. <laughs> so is there anything I need to do to get this to like produce an output? Yeah, so the one thing about processing that you should know is that it has two built-in functions that, that basically are always running, or, or, or basically are, are in every script, and that is okay. setup and draw. And they're quite appropriately named. One is everything you want to do in the setup, you put in setup, and everything you okay. want to do in draw, you put in draw. Right, so do I literally just type setup? And so yeah, how, do you know, like... would you know how to define a function? Because you actually have to define it. So... It was, uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the way to define a function in Python is just def, D-E-F. Okay. Yeah. So def. Space. Name of the function. Yeah, then the next one is draw. Yeah. Okay. So draw. Yeah. So, um, and, the, and the thing about processing is it's a graphical uh, piece of software. So it's okay. going to it's gonna want to create something on the screen. So mm -hmm. you need to tell it, um, I, want like a, I want a canvas of, the, of a size X by Y. Okay. So like 800 by 800 or... Something and like do that. I do that within setup or within draw? So if you did it within draw, mm -hmm. it would redefine the canvas every time. 
Okay, so I don't want it to do that, right? Because that's no just a waste that. of yeah. rights. Okay, I see. So I want to tab across a little bit then. So yeah, it's so don't you can use spaces, okay. but then you have to make sure you use the same number of spaces every time. Oh, okay. Python. Do I don't think. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think Python cares how many you use. It just cares that you that you're consistent. So use tab. It doesn't want to work. Okay, in that case, I'm going to go so with a single space. It doesn't want to work because you've not done something right. Can you see it? Do I need to like end the thing yeah. with a sem colon? Colon, yeah. Colon. It's like, oh, cool. And then when it should uh, auto format it for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. okay so it, good tries to know, to, right. it tries to keep you right. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. Ah, so you can't tell because okay, you're not finished yet. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> right, so I'm defining the setup. Uh, and then we'll just size. So I'm going to just guess I type size and then. Yep, and then it's just an XY coordinate. So uh, XY What's size. Like a, so like, this is the output of the window? Yeah, or? so let's do like, uh, let's do 600 by 400. That's like a, okay, that's just a little window. By 400, that, that's it? That seems reasonable, but X means like the letter X. So you need to do Ah, of comma, course yeah. you do use the star. Yeah. Right, cool. No, yep. no, no, it's just a comma. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. So if you like did, if height. you did X, if you did star, it would literally multiply six hundred. It would give you like the total number of pixels, and gotcha. that would be an enormous okay. canvas. <laughs> yeah. Right. Is there anything else within setup? So what I size? what I think we should do is just get something on the screen to make okay. sure that you, it's working. So let's okay. get your draw and your setup functions working. Right. So then, if I want to do something super simple, let's get um, let's try uh, just um, some text. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So that's going to be like a classic uh, uh i can help you with this bit because the, the text in python is a bit of a faff could i not just do like print so if you print where do you simple... if you did print where would it go i'm gonna guess in the bit in the, the bottom in the console yeah right. yeah yeah so that's for like you the the program oh, to as read. opposed to printing to the window that's... to the to the audience <laughs> yeah so it depends what you want to do okay um okay so well, let's just do a simple print x equals one. I don't know if this is going to work. Do I have to put that in like commas or something? I'm going to go with it. I'm going to okay. run it. Let's see what happens. Okay, it doesn't like things. Yeah. <laughs> so it's quite good because it tells you what it, it tells you what it thinks you did wrong. Yeah. So this item probably wants to be indented. All right. So that's my window. Yeah. I think that's my six, 400, 600 window. Yeah. And I've printed something which isn't in the window yeah. and doesn't appear to be in the console cool. either. So let's try it. Let's see if okay. you can figure out why that happened. So everything's correct, mm. right? You don't need to type anything differently. Something, but something's not right. right. So like, let, let's look at how what's happening here, right? So you're defining setup, right? Yep. And what's in, what have you put inside that setup? Size. And then? And then draw. Yeah, but you don't want to put draw inside the setup. Draw is its own distinct function, right? Yes. Of course. So then if I run that, there you go. now it's just printing x equals yeah. 1. And it will just keep doing this forever. It'll do it 30 times a, 30 times a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So it's just an extremely yeah. long list of the text, yeah. x equals 1. And it's good. Yeah. And it's also good that you recognized that that is text. With the, the quote speech with, marks. With like, the, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, yeah. Not, it's, not, um, it's not printing a variable or a no, constant. No, no, it's, it's printing like a, a string. Because if I obviously change it, yeah. we're not doing hello world, we're doing hello Mike. <laughs> Now it just says hello, my yeah, God. and it's right, doing okay, it brilliant. 30 times a second. So That's you've got it. you've got a canvas and you've got a print into console. So we're we're ready to rock and roll. Okay. Um, right. So I'm gonna have to define some things. Um, so from the way I've understood they're doing this, I need to define some variables. Yeah. Um, now, do these want to go within draw? That's yeah. a question. So because you've got a beefy computer. Mm -hmm. You can get away with like some shitty programming yeah. uh, things where you just like <laughs> define everything every time. Mm -hmm. But but uh, it's it's better practice to like think about mm, do I need to do this every time or do I need yeah, to do yeah, this once? Was... Yeah. Okay. So so in theory I could do it before draw. Yeah. So what are you trying variables. to do? Just define some variables. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just like so I know that right again following what they've done in the paper we're going to define this function e which depends on l m and n. So I'm yeah. just thinking should I just start by making sure I can get E to be what I want. So if I say L is one, M is one, N is one, do I get the E that I would expect? That seems like a logical place to start, yeah. So if we, we want L and M and N, they only need to be one like once, right? Yes. Because they're going to gradually increase. Yeah, 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 but so you're going to have to start with them. So I think, yeah. I can put it, I guess, let's do it. What I think is good practice before draw. Okay, so I want to define L, M and N, but if I follow exactly what was done, 
in the paper, then L is M plus R, and I define R. Yes. Okay, so let's follow. So they started with R was 1. So if I say R is 1, and then I want M is 1, I'm just going with equals and hoping for the best, and N is 0. Okay, and then let's put E within here for now. Uh, oh, I also want to then define L to always be M plus R. And then I'm going to put within here, I want to define E, which is going to be this thing. Yep. Okay. So let's, so yeah, let's, let's just try. simplify to that, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. I think I'll do that one just to be Sweet. safest. So three... Um, right, I'm going to put loads of brackets in, so three times. And I'm, I'm going to grab coffee while he like, types that out. <laughs> times m squared. All oh, right, I've got, okay, I've got an answer. Cool. Okay, so Sweet. I've... So let's just figure out whether that's... This is Do looking, I believe this? This is looking pretty good already, though. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so I like to hear So yeah, okay. let's, let's just evaluate it whilst the numbers are small to make sure that it makes exactly. sense. Exactly, so I'm trying to work out. So ultimately, E is based on... L cubed minus M cubed, right? So E is L cubed minus M cubed minus N cubed. And I have started this off by saying that L is two, um, M is one, and N is zero. So I believe that E should be equal to two cubed is eight minus M cubed. So minus one, minus zero. So I think E should be seven and I'm getting 17. Cool. Good start. Good start. <laughs> so something's wrong. Uh, so yeah, I bet it's good. You've done a couple of good things here. First of all, you recognised that you don't need like um, exclamation marks for for printing a variable. Yep. Yeah, you yeah. can just put it straight in. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, this is this is going well. So let's have a look. Uh, let's tidy things up as well. So uh, R, M, N, and L they're they're defined within setup. Okay. Yeah? So yep. they should be indented as if they were defined inside setup. Okay. Seems like you got away with it somehow. Don't know how that worked, but. Gotcha, you no, did. That's fine. Yep, cool. Uh, let's see if that made a difference. So every time you change something, just let's have a look. So now you're getting nothing. Now I'm getting nothing. So you see how, because they were outside mm -hmm. of the outside of setup, mm -hmm. th they were, it's changed how the program's running. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Python works by indentation. Yep. That defines where things belong. But there's other programs like Java they, they work with curly braces. So you're like, yes, so you can actually you... have your curly braces kind of wherever you want, as long as they're yes. in the right order. But at the end, you end up with like hundreds of curly braces closing all the layers yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of, yeah. of yeah. functions yeah. that you're in. So you've defined them inside setup and now it's not printing E, right? Yeah. So let's run it again. Let's stop it and then run it again. Yeah, so it's happened and it's not printing you out an error. Okay, so put them back in the, in, in the indentation. And let's do a little bit of debugging to see, to see what's not working. So I know what's not working, but I'm not gonna tell you. Okay. <laughs> so uh, let's comment out E for now, right? Okay, uh, is that percent? Uh, it's per it's um, no, uh, hash. Uh, it's hash on this one, all right. Percent is what I previously have done. Option, there you go, hash. Yeah, yep. cool. Let's see if, um, if draw has access to these variables. So let's see if it can get R. First of all, so let's print R out. Right, so within yeah. draw, print R. And then do print R. Yeah, okay. and let's see, oh, made a mistake there. Let's just see if it's getting it, right? So it's not even getting R. No. So what's the problem? So I'll explain. So to keep things tidy, Python likes its uh, variables to only be available inside the function in which they were defined. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, so Sorry. that means you could redefine R, M, and L here yep. and use them Yep. and they wouldn't be available anywhere else. Gotcha. So you could essentially have like R and hundreds of different functions. Yeah. It's to stop, it's because somewhere in Python, there's probably a function that uses R. Yeah, as <laughs> of yeah. course. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, they like, yeah, they limit, every time. yeah, they limit their scope. Yeah, gotcha. so yes. what you want to do is allow them to be available everywhere, yeah. okay? I'm not sure if this works, but the, the word you're looking for is global, yes. and that means it's a global variable. Mm -hmm. So try putting global into draw, um, yeah, so inside copy these or just no no the just global. inside yeah inside draw type the word global no no like oh, it, right. it, within the draw function global and let's just type push r like space r yeah and let's just run that I think I don't think that'll work but it might no 
Yeah, so it's, it can't see R. So what you have to do is actually define these variables out with a function, out with a setup function. So in the even higher level than setup. Yeah, so yeah, before yeah, yeah. setup. So just copy and paste. Right, and just put them before yeah. setup. You actually had this already, <laughs> by correct? Accident. Yeah, <laughs> by yeah, accident. Yeah, yeah, no, so, no, no, no. yeah. It's, it's good but to it know just, why. It just what's makes happening. sense to put yes. them above a function. Yeah, no, no, no. That's I get you now. No, that's helpful right. to know and how it's try it. Yeah, and now it's saying Printing now. R's now wrong. global says right. I can reach outside my domain of function and gotcha. grab a global variable. So I need to do that for all of them. Yep, but you can just separate them by a comma. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> so you, can, you can globalize millions of them. Yeah. Global R M. And, L. and I know people who are going to hate me for using global variables, okay? We're just trying to keep <laughs> it simple. I know I should be passing variables through in the function, but that's not what we're doing today, okay? <laughs> You're gonna get so many comments be like, don't use global variables! <laughs> Fine, yeah. all, all feedback welcome. <laughs> Directed to Mike, obviously. <laughs> also, I should state I should state that I have only just learned how to program myself. Like I'm like a year in or something. So I, there's going to be littered with mistakes and bugs. That I'm, I'm just trying to help a friend out, yeah. So don't get me shit. Okay. Um, right. So what I'm going to do is. Are you having more success now? Okay. No, it's so, still back to seventeen. So ir ironically, you actually did it properly first mm. time, and somehow it was getting them without global. Um, but never mind. So what I'm going to try is. If I know r is 1, let's print r squared. r squared, you want that to be a 2? Yes, I do. On indent, uh, yep. it has to be yep. there. Gotcha. OK, so it's printing 17 and 3. So it thinks r is 3. So if we, <laughs> if we square 2, if we square 1, we get 3. Getting that. <laughs> so that means that that's not the operator for that isn't, square is it? Root. Oh, is that like, is that adding to? Is that like saying go up to? Because R is one and then it's got like- I up. don't know what that means. I, I thought it was a bitwise operation, but that could be Java. I uh, wonder, it like, would make, see if five. you did it like five, then we should get oh. six. And we get four now. Yeah. Okay, I have no idea. So I think it's that. like a binary ah, operator. XOR. X or. Yeah, oh, sex so each bit to one if only one of the bits is one. Oh, so okay, it's definitely, definitely not doing what I want. Okay. <laughs> it's, not, it's not what you want. Right, so then this what is a horrendous tell me now. operator. It's weird, like you really know what you yeah. want, you just don't know how to do it. So if I do r star star two, yep. and then run that, now I'm getting one. Okay, I'm cool. going for that. And then let's just check if I do five. Yeah. Doesn't change. Yes. Which okay. means that uh, this, is, this is all wrong, yeah. So that's star star. That's star star star. That's star star. Star star. Star star. Um, now I'm feeling confident that E is going to come out of seven. Yes! seven. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, here we go. All right, sweet. I feel like we're going, we're cool. going somewhere. So okay. we'll just stick with the console just now. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. once you start getting numbers that you want, you can start learning how to put them on the canvas so that, that people nice. can see it. Yeah. Beautiful. Cool. Okay, so. So I've defined the function, define these. Now, <laughs> now what am I trying to do? <laughs> so I need e to be an integer. So I've just found a solution for e equals for seven. Actually, yeah. haven't I? <laughs> yeah. Like, a solution. What is the solution? Um, two one one. Two one one. So you've actually two, found one. one. Yeah. Sorry, two one zero. Two one zero. Yeah. I like assuming one of them can be non-zero. Wait, yeah, yeah, that is that is seven. Two yeah, so we found one solution. So cool. At least one solution by accident. Okay, now. So I think we have seventy-five to go. <laughs> and, okay. I, and and one of the interesting things about this is I think that there's like infinite number of solutions for every possible solution. You all again have to double check that as well. So I right. think there's yeah. Like, I was going to say I feel like yeah. I think there's infinitely many ways to create. We're not trying to find them all. Yeah. We're just trying to find one that works for that yeah. number. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, I feel like I'm gonna need an if loop. Yes. Right, because again, so, thinking about what they've done here in the paper was to, if it's greater than 100, it's too big because we're only looking for the first 100. Yeah. So yep. then let's change something. Okay, so if E is, I want to be between two values. Yep. So do you just type that how I would hope to type that? I think that the way you would type it is the correct way. Okay, well, let's I'm just try. gonna double check. If E is between minus 100 and 100, then, if then, 
then goes on the next line, maybe. Uh, so then is... Um, no. So, yeah, so just put your uh, um, colon. Colon, right. And then, and then yeah, it indents it for you. Oh, do so I like, have to still type this then? Is, no, this is just, what, what do I do knows. now? Okay, yeah. so if this, it knows to yeah. then, okay. So if E is between those numbers, like, what do I do? Um, print it. Record solution. Yes, record solution. So we can we can just say print for now. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 and then see what happens. Yeah. Okay, fine. Print E. Cool. And then else. Else? Yeah, you got it, yeah. Okay, all right. So if E's doing that on else. Let me see what Ah, happens. but now I need to know if it's bigger than 100. Oh, so else if? Else if? Is that? Uh, yeah, so uh, it's called elif. Elif, okay, thank <laughs> yeah. you. But I mean like else if. Yeah. It's like the other alternatives, so, okay. So, and is... Is the elif within the if? No. It's the same level as the if. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Thank you. Yep. Okay. <laughs> this is fun. Yeah. Right. Elif. Um, okay. Then um, e is bigger than 100. Yeah. Oh, you're flying through this. E is bigger than 100. Then what I want to do is, and then this is with inside it, n becomes increase n by 1. Oh, you're absolutely new on this. Words I love to hear. <laughs> So okay. E is given by this. If it's between minus 100 and 100, we like it, that's a solution. If it's not, we're going to try a new value of, if it's too big, we make n, we subtract off a bigger thing with the n, yeah. If it's too small, we add more to m. Fabulous. And then, but we want to cycle through r as well though, don't I, before I change m and n. So I think I want to cycle through r and compute each E for each R. That's what I'm thinking here. Because at the moment R isn't changing. So this is repeating every loop, right? Yeah. So what are we doing at the end of every loop after we've done all our, our, our operations? So I want to put another indent in here then. I want to in uh, yeah, double indent it. all of this. It's got okay. this, no <laughs> Like this is, so, this is so good. Okay, okay, so I need a thing here of saying, if m is less than, so they went up to 600. Yeah, okay, and so this is to is stop it. This is to stop it going nuts, and you testing out one billion <laughs> minus yeah, 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 yeah. two billion. <laughs> right, then we're going to define all of this loop. Yep. So undo what you just did. I'll show okay. you an easier way to do that because guaranteed this will, yeah, highlight it all. Ah. Uh, yeah, and then just tab it all. Fabulous. Yes. Okay. Otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. it won't run. So if we get to all the way to our upper bound for M. Yes. What do we want to do? I've got to go back and start. I've got to change R. Yeah. Because within here, I'm changing M and N. Yep. Yeah. Oh, but do we do we also say if M... M can only go up. Oh, and we don't care about N. So we're allowing N to go massive. Yep. Okay. Okay, we're just going to concentrate. We're just going to restrict by M. Okay. Yeah, okay, that, cool, that's, fine. that's just based on what the paper said. Okay, I yeah, yeah they, they do say the upper limit. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Okay, so they said stopping at that. So then if M's less than 600, I'm going to do this. So then this is going to be an elif. But it's not, what's your condition? If M is less than 600, do all of this. Ah, uh, no. Else, it's yeah. just else. <laughs> else, yep. so if it's not less than 600, we start again. So that means redefining r equals r plus 1. And yep. I'm going to leave m and n. I'm probably going to need to reset them now, aren't I? Yes, yeah, yeah. You've totally got this, man. Can I just comma and put, write it like that? No. No. It's their, their, their individual operations. Okay, so yeah. I need to do that. So so it's it goes um, else or elif and then the condition but you don't have a condition you're yes. just like if none of, if that thing's not meant do this. do this so that goes on another line gotcha so you need to move oh R so that one it. also yeah. needs to go on another line yeah okay so that's else then yeah. r is that okay is... so it just tidy up that colon and move it onto the else yeah because remember it's like else what else what and it, yeah yeah and then everything in this and then is n included. is then going to go back to zero and uh, m is going to be one yeah all right, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> that's gonna work. Okay, so this is this it. is like a whole PhD thesis in like <laughs> <laughs> back in the nineteen fifties. Yeah. So do, are are you actually printing to the screen? Yeah. Don't cool. Just... So it's going to print all the all the cubes it's found. Try it. See what happens. It's found a lot of sevens. Just going to keep doing seven. 
Okay, at the moment it's just rinsing through seven yeah. forever. So can it change those variables? Debug break. <laughs> okay. Let's what have it? a look. No, you must have written it down. If that, oh, you didn't write down like what to do though. Yeah. I said to do, but then if it gets, oh, I did. Then if it... it's a solution, increase n. Yeah. Right, you're right. So that's what I need to do. So if I get the solution, r doesn't change, n becomes n plus one, and m goes back to the start. So yep. r goes back to one, I think, yeah. I'll start it on one, so I'm going to say, let's just go with that. And M goes back to its starting value. I'm going to try it and see what happens. Oh, answers. It's doing something. I'm getting loads of answers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 8, minus 90, minus 43, minus 20, minus yeah. 27. So we told it to print out if it's between uh, 0 and 100. 100. So that, that'll do for Can now. I just change that to be 0 to 100? Yeah. Immediately could just do that now. Yeah, but uh, the, the solution... Uh, you'll you'll need another if because the code only works for that and that. Because basically it says if we're between 100 and 100, that means we're close, so increment it by one. If we're miles away, then do something else. So this means we're like, you want it to be symmetrical around. The, oh around, really? Because yeah. oh, okay. you're like close. Yeah. I see. I see. So yeah. I don't so, actually. So fine. Yeah. But we can, in some sense, ignore the negative ones when I'm printing out yeah. my answers. Yeah. Or you for can just you can just have another if statement saying only print it if it's. Uh, if it's so you can have nest an F in there if oh, you want. Okay, I'm gonna do yeah. that just you can fun. do infinite Fs if you want. Okay, so if people people will hate that as well. <laughs> <laughs> if E is between not one hundred, okay, and then within that loop, if E is positive, yep. Um, greater than or equal to zero. Well, we don't care about zero. Greater than zero. Yep. Print E. Yep. Else. No, you don't need an else. You can just say only do that. There's no because you don't want you don't care. What it does if it's not, just move on if it's not satisfied okay, by that okay, condition. And then I try. So hold on, let's, yeah, I'll uh, let it. I'll colon let it. at the end of if. Yeah. Oh, don't use your whole code. Colon at the end yeah. of if loop. And you'll probably want to indent it as well. That one's, uh, that one needs to be indented. Yeah, there. And then we should be okay because that's within that if. Yeah. Now that one's now within if equals, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yes, seven, six. So it's not found. 47. <laughs> Yeah, so it's pr so it's surprisingly slow for like doing this thing. I think this is really fast. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But it, it 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 shows how difficult this problem actually is. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You want to print out the answers so that we can check. So let's make sure I'm gonna get the right answers now. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I just need to turn it sideways for this shit. Forty one cubed plus minus forty cubed. Oh, minus, minus forty cubed. Minus forty cubed. Minus forty. Cubed. Um, cubed. Minus 17 cubed. Minus 17 Come cubed on, B8. Is equal. Come on. Where's the equal sign? <laughs> there. Is equal to 8. <laughs> yeah, you did it, man. Sweet, there that's it, it done. There it is. Woo. Oh, you're going way faster. Yeah. Oh, that's going to get them all. Yes. <laughs> but I, it's going to get them all, but how are you going to, like, how are you going to read it? <laughs> Uh, so I command so, F. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 I uh, I uh, what I did was I wrote code where if the functions if it's already been found just ignore it. Okay. Because you're gonna have like millions of eights. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yes. Um, yes. 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 Yeah. Yes, yes. And then I also got it to write it to a Excel sheet. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah, could yeah. just open it up. And yeah. then you only have a hundred lines. Yeah, um, and then... but I'll leave that to you. <laughs> okay, no, that's fair. Because <laughs> you, because you got it working. We clearly got a but list. It's, it's, it's this is producing it's a list. It's pretty of rapid, cubes. yeah. That and is very and rapid. some of these, um, like who knows? You could leave this going. You could leave this going for like years, and you might be the guy who finds the last <laughs> one. Because I think there's like two left or something, or one left. <laughs> yeah, fair point. Yeah, fair point. <laughs> just ruining my computer's battery <laughs> and processing power. But that's it, though. Yeah. It's going. It's rolling. That's awesome. So some of these that's are awesome. massive. So I seen okay. I seen five hundred there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see them popping yeah. up. And if you Amazing. want even more, like you can really you can hear your computer going. I know now. I was about to say it's yeah. gonna take off. <laughs> yeah. And if you really want to ramp it up, you can increase M to some astronomical yeah, yeah, like yeah. five so that means you'd have like five thousand minus five thousand plus a tiny number cubed. Amazing. I love it. Well done. Right. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you for and you did it. In, you you, you did it in forty-two lines. That's yes. pretty good. And you did it. And you like your spaces, so it's probably only twenty lines. All right. Okay. Sweet.
Awesome. Well done. I'm well, I'm well impressed with that. Thank you.